All right, let's finish off chapter six with the mighty central limit theorem. So far, all of our probability questions for the last two chapters have been about the probability of an individual. I'm saying, what's the probability that one person comes out between 40 and 60? Or what's the problem that one probability that one person comes out equal to 10? Or, um, that's not typically how we sample. We typically take a group. So in 6.5, we're shifting the question to say, what's the probability that a group of people come out this way rather than an individual comes out this way? Uh, when I teach the central limit theorem in a classroom, I have all my students bring in 25 pennies. And the first thing I have them do is plot all of their dates of their pennies up on the board. It takes a long time. Everybody's hands smell like copper afterwards. Uh, but let's say it ends up looking something like this. And then I have everybody dump their pennies into one bowl, mix it all up, and I say, okay, um, the pennies that you brought to class today are the population. That's every penny in the room. I'm going to take a sample of size five out of this bowl. So I just mix the bowl up and I take a few pennies out. And let's say the first one that I get is a is a 1980 penny. So I say, okay, just got that one right there. Let's see, that blue doesn't show up very well. Let's do red. I say, okay, I just got that one right there. Um, and the next one that I get is maybe a, you know, 1992. So I say, hey, pretend, and it doesn't have to be the bottom one on the stack for any reason. Let's say there's my 1992 penny that I just picked. And let's say I get like, I decide that I've gotten, I get an 86, so I get that one, and I get that one, and I get that one. And I say, okay, let's take my sample, let's get my sample average. So, you know, I just say I had a, had an 80, and I had a, what did I say? A 92. And I had, anyway, add the five numbers up, right? That's the important part. Add the five numbers up, divide by five, and I get the average of those five numbers, which looks to me just visually now, since I'm making this up on the spot, visually it looks to me like those five average about maybe a, I'm going to guess an 82 or something. So I say, let's make a new plot. Let's plot the sample averages. So I just got a sample average of 82. And then I say, okay, your turn. So I make everybody else in the class come up, grab five pennies out of the bowl, get their average, and plot their average on this new plot down here. And what ends up happening is, you know, another person gets a different average, another person gets a different average, and we get some averages. And I'm just going to speed up the process here a little bit, or a lot. <laughs> um, but what ends up happening is we end up getting a plot that looks kind of like this. And hopefully that makes sense to you in the sense that it'd be weird to get to grab five pennies at random and get an average out here. Right? That would be weird. I mean, granted, it could happen, but that means you had to get all of your pennies from from this little area right here to get an average that high. And that's just probably not going to happen if you're really just digging through the bowl and getting five pennies at random. And the same thing out here. Well, that would be weird also. Uh, so one thing that I will point out to people is, hey, the standard deviation of the original graph Seems like the mean's about there, and for the original graph, standard deviation, right? It takes two standard deviations to cover most of the data going on. So maybe standard deviations uh, look about like that. But for my new graph, this graph of groups of pennies, groups of five, uh, the standard deviation seems a lot smaller. And it does make sense, I think, that the average of five pennies should be clustered closer to the middle than just 
individual paintings would be. Um, so the standard deviation gets smaller. I also tend to point out to students that the mean of the two graphs is actually pretty much the same. Um, that's not an accident. Uh, that will happen every time, basically. And the other thing I point out is that the shape uh, ends up looking pretty normal. Of course, the original shape looked fairly normal, too. Uh, but the shape looks normal. So there's sort of three things that happen. Uh, let's take a look at a second example. Uh, so let's say that instead the pennies ended up looking like this. And I'd do the same thing, right? I would, I'd go through and I'd pick five pennies out of the bowl. And they're more spread out this time, so maybe I'd get one here and one there and one there and one there and one there and I want to average those I get a I get an average about there um, but as I do that same process again uh, the samples of five their averages end up being a little more spread out because the original data was a little more spread out but we still get basically a normal distribution shape that's got a smaller standard deviation than the original again the original probably spread this time the standard deviation is bigger has to look about like that and again the standard deviations here smaller than they were on the original population um, so what we're trying to get a feel for here is how averages of groups behave as, as opposed to the individual dots. And we're again seeing that the mean maybe stays the same, the center, uh, but the standard deviation gets smaller and the shape gets more normally distributed. So it's fine to do this by hand with pennies on the board. Uh, it's as far as simulations go, it's always helpful to get a computer in here at some point. Um, so let me, uh, this is just a little uh, demo app that I often use. It basically does the same thing, but um, let's say the pennies uh, end up looking like this. Okay, I'm just drawing something that's not at all uh, normally distributed. And let's say I want to take, you know, five there, there's the five and there's the average of those five right there All right, and I can do it again take five more out of it and there comes the average so I've done I've done two averages of five from the original okay do it again do it again do it again uh, that one got some unusually high data so it got a, a higher average but uh, let's rather than animating let's let's just do another five boof okay and another five 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 and as i keep going with this uh you can see that the standard deviation is smaller than the original black graph you can see the shape starting to get a little bit normally distributed and you can see the mean and by the way they have the mean marked over here you can see the mean 17.64 the actual black graph, the population, the parent population, uh, has a mean of 18. So it's about the same, but let's jump and let's just do 10,000. Uh, so now the mean is 18.8 .8 versus 18.83, very similar mean. Uh, the standard deviation of the original graph was 7, or 6.97. This standard deviation, obviously smaller. And the shape's getting pretty normally distributed. Uh, so let me do uh, like 100,000 instead of 10,000. Okay, things don't change much. Standard deviation smaller. Uh, the mean is exactly the same as the mean of the black graph now. And the shape's pretty darn normal. Matter of fact, if I click this little fit normal curve on there, it's, yeah, it fits a normal curve really well. Um, so let's do that again. I'm just going to redraw this into something something else kind of random and I'll just jump the gun here and, and hit a hundred thousand times you can see the mean of the black graph 
15.83. Uh, the mean of the blue, 15.4. Again, extremely similar. Standard deviation goes from 9 on the parent population down to 4 on the, um, on the samples. Um, so this, this tends to, this does happen every single time, and this is the essence of the central limit theorem. Uh, so let's go back and talk about what the central limit theorem actually says. And then we'll look at some examples in the next video. Okay, so here's what your book's going to say, and they say it complicated, of course. Um, but their basic statement here says, so, so you've got an original population. And the original population has a mean and it has a standard deviation. That's fine. They're using Greek letters here for population, mean, standard deviation. And then it says, okay, go ahead and pick some samples of the same size. Uh, we, for us, we were doing five, but it doesn't have to be five. It can be whatever size you want. Um, so you, you pick samples of size five from the population. And here's what it says. It says, this is their complicated way of saying the mean of the averages will match the original mean of the population. We saw that happening. And they say the standard deviation of the averages will be smaller <laughs> than the standard deviation of the population. And this right here tells us how much smaller. It says divided by the square root of n. And keep in mind, n, at least in our examples, was 5. But in general, we'll be dividing by the square root of the sample size. Say we took samples of size 5. It should shrink down by about the square root of 5. Um, and the last thing it says is, hey, oh, so, so the things we've said so far is the mean stays the same, standard deviation gets smaller, and we even got a little formula for how much smaller it gets. And the other thing it says is the shape uh, will get normal. Uh, say so the shape will be normal, first of all, if the original population was already normal. That was kind of the first graph we did. Uh, it also says the shape will be normal if your sample sizes are size 30. We didn't even take samples of size 30. We were taking samples of size 5. And it still worked, actually. We could see it working pretty well. But central limit theorem is a little more conservative. And it says if you take samples of size 30 each or bigger, you'll definitely get a normal distribution when you plot those. Uh, if the original sample population wasn't normal and the sample size is less than 30, you won't necessarily get a result that's normal. Most of the time you will anyway, um, but not guaranteed. So this is central limit theorem when it's three parts. It says something about the mean, it says something about the standard deviation, and it says something about the shape, the distribution. So I know this is all like theoretical right now. Uh, in the next video, we'll look at how to actually use this on some homework examples.